before the foundation of the earth. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can everyone hear me this morning? I'm sure I'm live on air with people who are excited to bring before the Lord the seed that has been committed into their hands. Brothers and sisters, the Lord has committed his property in your hands and you want to be found faithful with what has been committed in your hands. So this morning, as we continue in worship, we want to move straight into praying for our children and their relationship mm -hmm. with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The scripture says, remember the Lord in the days of your youth. Why? Because it is better to carry your yoke in your youth. So, so I want you to begin to bring the children before the Lord straight away and say, Lord, these ones that you have given me, this part of your property that you have allocated to me, I have come to give you thanks. I have come to give you praise. I return them to you, even on this mountain, oh God. Because it is only what is kept in your hands that is truly kept, oh God. We commit all of our children into your hands. Father, you are the God of all flesh, the Father of all spirits. You know the number of hair on each of the children that you have committed in our care. And so we are back. We're back to you. The only one we can depend on, the only one we can rely on, we are back with them to say, here you are. You have your way in their lives. You run your agenda in their lives. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in the lives of our sons, in the lives of our daughters. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says, love not the world. Second, First John chapter 2, verse 15. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, but are there not many of our children who have, who have, who have, be, who have had a soul tie with the world. The Bible says there is nothing in the world. If any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that in the, is in the world, what are they? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. This morning, I want us to begin to pray and say, Father, this ones that you have committed into my care, I bring them before you. And I ask, oh God, that your spirit will begin to influence their cravings and their desires, that they will not love the world, but that they will love you. They will not love the lust of the eyes. They will not love the pride of life. They will not love the lust of the flesh. They will not be yielded to any other but you, because you are the God of in any way, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's what the word of God says. the word of God says. Reke the word of God says. That is the desire of God concerning every one of us. And, and of course, because we're praying for our children, we say that is the desire of God concerning our children, that they will love the Lord with all their hearts and with all their souls and with all their mind, with all that is within them. They will love the Lord. They will not love the world. No. How do you begin to love something? It's because of association. That is how you begin to come into a relationship with something. You begin to associate with the thing. And Bible says, evil company corrupts good manners. 
Soto Brakache Denia, Ebre de Seneginia Hata, O Bahata Sikenia Nahindozono, all those portals through which the love of the world begins to influence our children. This morning we shut them down in the name of Jesus. We shut down the voice of the stranger. We shut down the portals through which our children have been influenced with the things of the world. Yes, the Bible says in 1 John 5, 19, it says we are of God. Oh, Rabbi Shadania, but the whole world lies in wickedness. There is so much darkness in the world. There is so much destruction and wickedness in the, in the world, but we are of God. Even though we are in the world, we are not of the world. We are of God. We have come from the Father. We have proceeded from heaven. And so we have come to exercise the counsel of God upon the earth. This is the testimony of our children, that they are of God. They are not of this world, even though they live the life of God in this world. So this morning, we begin to make power available for each and every one of those children that the Lord has given to us. And we say, Father, let your will be done in their lives. Let your kingdom come in their lives. In the name of Jesus, Urabasan. Brothers and sisters, I know sometimes it feels like, oh, I've done everything I know to do. Things have not changed. I want you to remember the word of the Lord in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. It says, do not cast away your confidence. Do not throw in the towel. Don't give up yet. There is recompense. There is reward. So even as you are here partic participating in this exercise of praying for our children, praying for the next generation, resetting our sin, or bringing them in alignment with the counsel of God. I want you to know one thing at the back of your mind, no matter how many things the enemy has stacked up against you, reward is at the end of it. And I'm not just talking about you being rewarded. I'm talking about that situation turning around and a testimony coming forth out of it. I don't care how far gone that child is and the child is saying, I don't believe in God or the child is saying, hey, this God thing, I'm not really into it anymore. Or the child is saying, no, it's, it's just a figment of your imagination. Or the child is saying, oh, we are just a product of a big bang theory. I want you to know that this intercession of yours, this time of praying with the, praying with the help of the Holy Spirit, this time of pressing in, in the place of prayer is not in vain for God has not called the house of Jacob to, to, to serve him in vain. Even as you have come, you can rest assured according to Hebrews 10 35 that great recompense awaits you. Great reward awaits you. Great testimony awaits you in the name of the Lord Jesus. So be encouraged. Hallelujah. As we carry on praying, stay encouraged. That is why the scripture says do not forsake the assembling together of the brethren because because some have already forsaken it or do not forsake it because this is the place where you get charged up where you get encouraged to continue to stay in the battle and if you are on my on my mailing list today you would have found out that i said to you quitters never win oh and but winners never quit you of course you know that quote but i want you to know that the word of god supports that quote that you, if you will continue to if you continue to hold on you continue to stay in the fight you continue to trust in the lord hey you would reap you would reap you would reap you see that child return you see that child return to a, a, a healthy thriving relationship with the lord jesus you see that child return to their place in the in in the kingdom of God. You see that child be restored to every in every area of their lives. Even as we are praying concerning their spiritual journey, I want you to begin to see change. Stop looking at the at the uh, at the at the current uh, the, the current information uh, before you. I want you to look at the word of God. That's what Paul was telling them in Second Corinthians chapter chapter four, verse seventeen and eighteen. He it says, while we look not at the things that we see, but at the things that we do not see. 
For the things that we see, they are temporary, but the things that we do not see, they are eternal. What are you seeing today with your physical eyes? The child that has said, I'm no longer interested. A child that used to be a Sunday school teacher, all, all, all of a sudden spends two weeks in university and has come back with ideologies and is telling you stories, telling you high sounding information that some professor that is frustrated has told them. I want you to know that it is a lie from the pit of hell. It cannot hold water, not on your watch. And so in Jesus' name, we come in agreement with the word of God today that our children shall be saved, our children shall be delivered. They are already delivered, but we say that they are, that they are, they are, they are saved and delivered from the calamity that seeks their soul, from the things that seek their attention that are not of God in the name of Jesus. Reke Sologos Kidalabashada, wherever you are, Reke Soto Krodoshede, make sure that you are in a quiet place, though. Make sure that your voice is below mine. But let us pray and press into, into, the, into, into the freedom of our children from the shackles of the world. Oh, for some of our children, they're being held down by worldliness. They're being held down. They're, they're, they're being bogged by the desire to be like the world. Begin to pray in the spirit and begin to decree by your understanding that your children have served the Lord in spirit and in truth in the name of the Lord Jesus. You are free, son. You are free in the name of Jesus. We are free. We are the <laughs> you know the enemy is the one responsible for deafness is the one responsible for hardness of hearing and the, Jesus said behold I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon all of the works of the devil so if you understand that the hardness of heart or the, or the, or the stubbornness that is coming from your children talking in the, about their spiritual journey some of them have said look this year Jesus is it, 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 it's a bit too much you guys are just into it too much. Uh, and you know that what that child is primarily saying is that Jesus is not at the center of their lives. I want you to begin to, to I want you to understand that it is a hardness of hearing. It is a dullness of hearing that is affecting that child. And so, because Jesus said, anyone that hears this word will leave. Anyone, even if, even from the grave, anyone that hears this word. And so, of course, the enemy stacks up barricades so that they cannot hear this word 
testimony, begin to exercise your authority as an able minister of the New Testament. I command their ears to pop open, command their, their spiritual ears to pop open and say, in the realm of the spirit, I stuff your ears. You will hear the word of the Lord. You will hear the love of the Father. You will see God. You will encounter God and you will follow him in the name of Jesus. Ah, we drown the voice of the stranger with the voice of the Holy Spirit. We amplify the voice of the Holy Spirit to drown the voice of the stranger, the voice of the liar, the voice of the deceiver. Ah, and it is the voice of the stranger that has caused some of our children to make antichrist lifestyle choices. I want you to begin to attack all oh, those antichrist lifestyle choices that say this morning, I cut you down. I bring you to zero all of your influence. Lifestyle choices in, in, in the area of, 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 of their love for money. Some of them are into gambling. Some of them are into substance and uh, 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 drugs and substance abuse. Yes, maybe you say, yeah, it's not my child, but I want you to pray for every child in the group and say, today, I exempt you from all of the, from, from any kind of soul ties to every antichrist lifestyle choice in the name of Jesus. Some of them have made antichrist lifestyle choices when it comes to their sexuality and their purity. Some of them have made antichrist lifestyle Lifestyle choices, where it comes to their their behavior with, with, with their with their parents and their behavior, even with people of the world. I want you to release your faith as we pray for one more minute and set our children free from the bondage of antichrist lifestyle choices. I want you, you are the one that knows the word that is afflicting that child. Break its hold, destroy. Jesus said, "You can destroy the works of the enemy. You don't need to destroy." your child just destroyed the works of the enemy and how do you do you speak because we are speaking spirits of mute yourself let's pray bring the right kind of lifetime choices in the name of jesus Yes, we are social beings. So for every time we pray, we need to remember that the influence of one person is enough to make a change in the lives of anybody, anybody, you, me, or our children. And so we want to begin to pray concerning their relationship with people, concerning their network, concerning their associations, concerning their their their. their 
allegiances who are they in contact with who are they connecting with yes but the one that sent them to the earth the lord god almighty he knows who he has arranged for them to be in connection with he knows who will enhance their destiny he knows who will enable them to blossom and so we begin to pray into the network of our children what do you do you speak the life of god by praying in the spirit over their network over all that concerns them in their relationships our uh, friendships at school relationships at work uh, people that they're that they're forming kind of relationships with doesn't necessarily mean marriages but at this time we're just praying into the into all of their network allowing the life of god that is in you to invade their network so that it will consume anything that is not of god so that it will enhance and and, and build and grow all that has been planted by god jesus said anything that is not planted by my father must be uprooted and so it, as as members of the army of the Lord Jesus Christ we come and we uproot all, all forms of allegiances that are not of God. There are children who have not graduated today because they had the wrong friends. There are children who would just not turn up in class, running uh, truancy, delinquency, and all sorts because they have some kind of associations and friends. There are children who don't believe in God today because they met a silly, frustrated lecturer in university. I want you to begin to speak into all of their networks. Nepodo because they are destiny making or breaking. We want to speak into them. Jesus said, those that believe on me, out of their bellies will flow rivers of living water. I let those rivers come out of you today because you are here as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let those rivers begin to pour into the relationship of your children. And like we found out in Psalm 46, that that river makes glad the city of God. Why don't you begin to pray in the spirit and say in the name of Jesus, I speak the life of God into all of my children's network, wherever they are far and near, whether they are younger or older children, I release the life of God into their network. Yes, your child is still in crash, but she, he or she already has a network. She has a nanny. She has a carer. She has somebody that is in their network, but that the spirit of God, as you release the spirit of God, it begins to affect those of you that use a uh, um, that use domestic staff, it begins to affect uh, the, the influence of the domestic staff over the lives of those children. Oh, meet yourself. Let's pray in the spirits. Speak into the lives, uh, particularly your domestic staff, that they will not have negative influence over your children. Where are you? Where is everyone? Let's pray in the spirit. Lord, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
all those that have been stationed around them it doesn't mean that they are evil it just means that you get the opportunity to speak the life of God into their connection with your children I just have that in my spirit right now those house help situation those child minder situation those carer situation those mentoring situation those coach situation all those prodigy and mentor situation all those are just opportunities to either influence the child wrongly or, or, or in the right direction. And so I want you to take, uh, take a bold step and speak life into all the connections that your children are into, whether knowingly or unknowingly. The Holy Ghost knows where it is. So let's follow him. Come on, unmute yourself. Let's pray in the spirit. <laughs> The Bible says in Jeremiah 15, I will give you pastors. And don't worry, I'm not talking about uh, church pastors. I'm just talking about the word of the word pastor means shepherds. I will give you shepherds. That means I'll give you guide. I'll give you counsel. I'll give you those that will lead you in the knowledge and the truth. So I'll give I'll give that to you. That's the promise of God to his people. I want you to begin to release that promise over that child. Because 
I'm looking in my in my spirit, I'm seeing the relationship between a mentor and a mentee. And the mentor is the one that begins to teach the mentee either right or wrong. And then no mentors who have taught young people to, to, to go into gambling or go into, into sexual addictions and, and perversions. And then no mentors who have taught people who, who have taught their, their protégé to, 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 how to, to, to um, walk in the wrong path or even in the right path. Either way, it works either way. And that is why our path is to come into synergy with the Holy Spirit and say that the mentors and the, and the coaches and the, and the um, people that you have sent to influence our children, we release our faith that there'll be a connection between them and our children right now. Jesus said, pray to the Father and he will send the laborers. In other words, the laborers are ready, but the Father needs to be licensed through your faith and my faith. And even as a hundred and whatever of us are here, we release our faith this morning that the Father will release those bespoke, custom-made, tailor-made laborers that he has Assigned to our children in the name of Jesus. Robo soto brade shede mudo so kori badako shagayaya. Omit yourself and release that child. while we're there we're just going to go there let's begin to pray concerning the healing of our children's psychology those ones that have been that have been abused by all those relationships that are very close child mind uh, driver um uh, mentor coach oh, there, there, there's been some of our children that have been traumatized by this thing they don't even know what's wrong with them i want you to release your faith this is the place of healing it is the mountain of the lord's house the bible says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance i want you to begin to pray for our children and say today we bring the healing power of god to invade your soul invade your emotions invade your mind children that have been abused they don't even know why they are feeling the way they are feeling but they're just feeling odd in fact some of them will say to you yeah i'm this body trapped in this body but i want you to just begin to as you are praying in the spirit allow your mind to do to do the work and paint a picture of victory a picture of deliverance a picture of emancipation for each and every child that has been captured in their soul somewhere i want you to know that the blood of jesus avails from the trap for the triune being of the man the spirit the soul and the body as we release our faith this morning we release our faith for the total liberation of our children's soul where the seat of their emotion the seat of their mind the seat of their intellect that there be total liberation in the name of jesus so that these children will no longer just die in silence many of them cannot explain what is happening to them but they know that their lives have been tampered with jesus said in that parable he said an enemy has done this oh rapadaka shaganya what do you do to an enemy when an enemy is found when a thief is found you make him pay and by the blood of jesus we invade the minds of our children we invade their soul with the blood the cleansing blood the healing blood the blood that speaks better things than the blood of abel so that these things will not cause them to live limited lives wherever you are unmute yourself and pray for that child that's been tampered by a driver or a house girl 
Thank you, Father. The blood of Jesus avails for our children, avails for, 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 for all of our children in all of their experiences. Lord, your blood, your blood stands as a stronger memory, as the stronger memory. Your blood wipes all oh, the, the pain of the past and the, and the trauma of the past. Your blood wipes it and gives them a new hope and a, and a blessed assurance, a hope for tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory and all the praise. Hallelujah. Oh, thank the Lord for you. We're going to continue in those prayers. We're just going to take a few announcements and probably one testimony, and we'll be right back to carry on with these prayers. Please hold on with me, and I'll be there. Um, announcer, are you ready? Yes, I am. Thank you, Pastor Agatha. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us in this prayer every one of the various ways to connect with our ministry you can send us some um, an email on um, prayer bootcamp at oasisfoundation.org.uk uh, to let us know your prayer requests to give us feedback and to share your testimonies and you can also find our recordings the recordings of all our prayer meetings on our youtube channel prayer bootcamp for all nations so if you click on it and click our playlist uh, you'll find all the recordings there thank you uh, please remember that we'll be taking communion at the end of the meeting, so please get your communion emblems ready. Thank you. Pray with me, somebody. Our weekend telephone prayer line is on today from Saturday. It's on on Saturdays and Sundays from 2 p.m. to 12 midnight UK time. The telephone number is on your screen. You can call the number to uh, get prayer warriors to agree with you according to the word of God. And um, we want to thank all of you who have been calling and we want to encourage you to uh, let us know if you need further prayer support and to please share your testimonies uh, when, you, uh, when the victory has manifested. Thank you. Our prayer meeting encounter night, uh, monthly prayer meeting is on on the first of the month, which is on 7th of November. That's when we have the next one. It's at 9.30 to 11.30 p.m. UK time. More of that um, in the coming weeks. So please note it in your diaries. Thank you. So I just want to take a moment just to thank all of you who have been sharing your testimonies with us. Um, taking the time to write them out or to uh, record voice notes and send to us. We read these testimonies out anonymously in order to give glory to God, to inspire the faith of others, to encourage the brethren. So we just want to thank you. I want to encourage uh, everyone to uh, please send us a testimony when you have received victory, when you have prayed for something and you have received the answer. Uh, no, no testimony is too small. Uh, we just want to encourage you. Thank you very much. And with that, I will just go to the prayer, uh, the prayer request for today. I just want to make one clarification regarding the 
uh, prayers report that we had last week. I just want to um, clarify that the uh, actual miracle was that the young man received a full scholarship to study in uh, in the college in, in the U.S. and to play basketball. So he received a full U uh, basketball U.S. college basketball scholarship. Glory be to God. Um, so regarding today's testimony, I'll just read. Hello, everyone. I am the parent who testified not too long ago about how God has been taking care of my son's all-round well-being, that is, his spiritual growth and social life, as well as academic progress and more. I testified that after my son, who had experienced peer pressure, bullying, and racism during his secondary school, including sixth form education, and this had always made him apprehensive in new environments. He, needs, he needed to improve on two of his A-level results uh, when he was unhappy with his grades. This was the sixth form set whose results were released after the first COVID-19 lockdown in 2020. I testified that God took care of my son's concerns about going to a new sixth form college by planting there an old contact that he had not met since he attended the same private tuition center for the 11 plus exam years ago. This contact called out to him as he stepped into the college on his first day at the college and introduced him to everyone. God gave him favor with tutors, including an atheist biology teacher who, who, gave, him, um, who gave him an award in front of the whole college during the last assembly before the end of term. My son says he enjoyed his brief time at that college more than his entire secondary school education and wished he had been at this college instead. Now, God has done more. My son was accepted at university for a degree in law and business, which he commenced this month. Mm -hmm. He was concerned that there would be few or no students from his ethnic background. He's Nigerian. But this year, the university has probably admitted more than they have ever done, even in his particular degree. He was allocated shared accommodation, a shared room, which we were all concerned about. Most students have a room to themselves in first year. He did not know what to expect. Plus there, were, there was clearly not going to be any social distancing occurring in this situation. We all prayed about it. The roommate did not show up for the first few days and we thought he was not going to turn up, but we soon got a text from my son to say that his roommate had arrived. The roommate ended up being an Irish young man whose aunt is married to a Nigerian. Uh, when my son got over this surprising bit of news, they both argued about a particular Nigerian dish called Egusi. The roommate was convinced that Egusi is a stew, and we know why, but my son argued that Egusi is a soup, and we know why Nigerians call it a soup. Both my son and his roommate are the only ones in their flat who attended boarding school, and this gave my son support with the other flatmates who had felt that only posh students go to boarding schools and had acted a little bit odd about this earlier on. My son then discovered that his roommate had attended secondary school with a student who had attended my son's sixth form school, so they had even more in common. Furthermore, they both support Arsenal Football Club, and last weekend they watched the match last week together in their room, during which Arsenal beat Tottenham 3-0 three to, three to their delight. This young man steps out of the room when my son receives a phone call from us, his parents, just out of respect and to give my son some privacy. We popped back to see my son last weekend and my son stayed with us in our family room at our hotel overnight. Our son forgot to text his roommate who later texted to ask if my son was all right as he noticed he had not returned for the night. We also recently found out that our son's roommate's dad, an, an Irish Caucasian man, was born in a small town very near Oweri, currently the capital of Igbo State in Nigeria. Who could have arranged and worked all this out but God? Even the most cynical person would have to wonder at how all these supposed coincidences occurred at the same time. Mm. But they are no coincidences. This is Jehovah himself at work. Mm. God Almighty cares about our children's all-round well-being, including issues which may seem minor to some, but major to our children. Mm. He's a God of love, and I hope this testimony encourages somebody today. God bless you, and thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Encourages me, encourages you, a whole lot of us. Please, let's thank God for the, for the, for the hand of God in moving things around to work out for that child. Thank you. Know, thank just you. Just we thank were you. ending the last prayer thank point, you. I thank was thinking you. that thank we need to pray into thank the you, lives Lord. of children who have been because bullied. Because this is your you know, Bullying in is, the name of Jesus. Bullying, bullying is of the devil. The devil is a bully himself. And so we will not allow, we will not allow the devil to 
on his agenda of bullying. You know, I wanted I wanted us to pray for children that had been bullied. You know, even as we have prayed for those that have been bullied by staff and all those connections, some of them have been bullied by their maids. That that is of the devil. The devil is a bully himself, and so we should not allow him to run his agenda in the lives of our children. That it is just so important that our children are able to live free. The Bible says, "Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty." I hope you know that bullying doesn't only occur in school; it occurs in relationships. That some of our children they have friends that feel that they own our children. They they, they decide what parties they go to. They decide the kind of hair, you know, like especially with the girls. Oh, this person doesn't have this kind of hair. That is a bullying spirit, and it is important that we stamp it out in the lives of our children. And so we're just going to pray and continue to pray and pour up the spirit of God into the lives of, the ch- of our children that have felt bullied one way or another from maybe mates or older friends or whatever. We just want to release them from that, from the caging and the trauma of bullying. I mean, to think about that testimony, that young man ha- has experienced so much bullying that it affects different areas of his life. But God, through the prayers of his parents, has, be- has, has given him victory so that he, he has even organized things that you could never have uh, you could never have thought of and we're so grateful for that testimony glory be to god let's pray in the spirit as we continue to make power available for our children's relationship uh, their relationships at home yeto sarabashankeri adasuda says what is bible says it is a good and pleasant thing for brethren to dwell together in unity that our family relationships will be established on love established on, on, on the fruit of the spirit, joy, gentleness, understanding, the faithfulness, the love for one another. Masko de keshe genya hana, do de bada se genya, do kre de se le kogada. All our family relationships we establish in the love of God. Pray to the Lord to be the shadow. Pray with somebody. Pray with somebody. Speak into your family relationships. All the love of God into your family relationship. Abu says in the last days children will be disobedient to parents. We come against the priest of the power of the air, responsible for disobedience to parents, is responsible for disobedience in total. So we come against it where it concerns our children, so that their hearts will be yielded to the healthy parental guidance that God has planted in the families in the name of Jesus. Some of our children, because they don't want to obey, they have decided to detach themselves from the family. Some of them are saying, No, I don't want, I don't want to be 
connected with my family. Please release your faith on behalf of all of our children that have detached from the family unceremoniously. Some of them, because they don't want our advice, they don't want our input. So they've said, you know what? I'm not going to contact them. I want you to please release your faith for your brother, for your sister, whose son or, or daughter has detached from the family. Some of them have been lied to. Some of them have been spiritually hijacked by, by spiritual communities, unwholesome spiritual communities that have lied to them. And, 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 and in, in a particular instance, this, this, this child cannot talk to their parents until their pastor has, has, has actually approved it. This, and that is an unhealthy relationship. That's an unhealthy relationship with, with any kind of pastor. I don't care what kind of pastor is. To have to take permission from a pastor to speak to your parent is an unhealthy setting. That is not what God sent pastors to do. And so I want you to begin to release your faith with me for all of our children that have been lied to, that in the name of Jesus, that they will live lives that are free, free in the hands of the Holy Spirit, free in the hands of the kingdom of God, free in advancing the kingdom of God, that as a family, we will forge ahead in the, with the love of God, forge ahead with the peace of God, advance the kingdom of God as a family. The Bible says that the God our Father, it is to him that the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Your family is named to God our Father. And so tonight, this morning, as you make power available, let that power rejuvenate that relationship with that child. Wherever they are, I want you to release them. The scripture says in Isaiah that our children shall be delivered. Even the captive of the mighty shall be delivered. The captives of the mighty shall be taken away from them and the prayer of the terrible shall be delivered. I will contend with them that contend with you and I will save your children. Lord, by sending Jesus, you have contended, you have saved. So this morning, we come in agreement with what you have done in the, on the cross, with what you have done by, by, by shedding the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have released our children. So we refuse to allow the agenda of the enemy to continue to run its course in the lives of our children. We take a stand against it in the name of Jesus and we command all our children to be restored, reunited with the families in the name of Jesus. We refuse to allow ourselves to be under the curse of, of, of children being detached from us. We refuse because Christ has already redeemed us from the curse. We refuse to allow the curse to run in our lives. Somebody says, but my own children don't do that. Please, why don't you pray for one moment for those children who those, those your brothers and sisters who are dealing with those kind of things. There are some of your brothers and sisters whose, whose children have detached from the family, whose children have refused to finish just one course, just finish one lap of education, finish one lap of, of, of endeavor. Bring yourself to, to, to be a finisher, be a starter and a finisher. Some of our children are having problems with that, so we make power available so that our children would not just be starters, but they will be strong finishers, strong finishers. And that brings me into praying into their academics and their intellectual endeavors. Or meet yourself. Let's pray in the spirit. <laughs> I want you to see that the Holy Ghost is interested in every detail. Look at what happened in the life of that, that young man in that testimony. The Holy Spirit helped him to navigate all the different details of his life. Look at the joy that is coming out of that. I want you to know that the Holy Ghost knows which school, knows which, which um 
tutorial uh, group knows which setting is best for that child. Yes, you know that, oh, this school is high up on the league table. It's not about league tables anymore. It's about the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost lead that child to the place where their, where, where their intellectual uh, endeavors will be enhanced, will be, will, be, uh, um, will, will be equipped, adequately equipped, because sometimes you send a child to a high sounding school that has all the, ticks all the boxes, but that child isn't doing well because that child is not where God has deployed help for him or her. Begin to pray. Actually, this prayer is for you as a, as a parent or as a guide that in the name of Jesus, you will, you will be led in your guidance to your children. You will not just guide your children according to your own understanding, but it will be by the leading of the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus and in their academic life, in their intellectual life, oh, that they will be guided into the right place by the right Council. That as they begin to choose careers, as they begin to make career choices, the of God will enable them to make the right life changing life life uh life changing choices choices of career choices of where to live choices of of uh, of what uh, course to study that by the spirit of god our children will begin to make those decisions by the spirit of god by the help of the holy spirit before we bring our prayers to a close, why don't you move that prayer along and say that person that my child will spend the rest of their lives with. You say to me, but my child is only two years old. Please arrange it now. Glory be to God. Arrange it now and allow the Holy Spirit to orchestrate and do that arranged marriage for your child. I'm talking about Holy Spirit arranged marriage, Holy Spirit arranged relationship. I want you to pray into the love life of every child. It doesn't matter how young or old they are because one day they will want somebody to love them. They will want to love somebody. Ah, you want to you want them to get it right. You know the story of, of Esau, the story of Rebecca and the story of Isaac. So if you like, this is a selfish selfish prayer point. The Bible says concerning Esau in Genesis chapter 6, 36, 26, verse 34 and 35. Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of uh, the, um, Beretite, the Hittite, and Bashmath, the daughter of Edlon and all that. Anyway, those names are big names. He says, and he says, but he, this was a grief. The wives of Esau, they turned out to be a grief 
Oh, it was grieving. It was, it, 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 they turned out to be miserable bitterness to Isaac and Rebecca. I just need to read that in many translations, Genesis chapter 26, verse 34 and 35, that the, 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 the people that Esau married, so whether your own Esau is a boy or a girl, it's irrelevant, but the people they married, the people they brought into their lives as a permanent part of their lives, they, they, they brought so much misery to the family. I want you to please pray to the your child's love life as we begin to bring our prayers to close that the Lord, the Holy Spirit will prosper in his ministry in leading our children into healthy marriages. I know that this is not a prayer point of one minute, one day we'll have to deal with it on his own, but we won't be in this meeting setting. So you come another time. But I want you to please pray, allow the Holy Spirit to release his virtue through you into the love life of your children, whether they be men, whether they be boys, girls, whoever, whatever age they're at, release the, the virtue of the Spirit of God into their love life. That just as God used Eliezer to arrange a marriage for God by his Spirit will arrange the marriage and the relationships of our children. And it is not, it is, it is not all hope is lost when that child is in the wrong relationship to this morning you can in this next 30 seconds release the, the, the power of the spirit of God to, to, to move that child into a healthier relationship some of them are in relationships some of them are in toxic relationships I don't know about you but any toxic relationship is not, does not have the right to, to thrive in the lives of my children Father, we thank you. We thank you for the help of the Holy Spirit as we have prayed at in this time in this um, prayer meeting. We thank you because we could not have done this ourselves. The Bible says God is the one that is at work in us. Thank you because you have walked in and through us as we have prayed in this place together as a people. Thank you because you are here in the midst of us, in the midst of us, not just to watch us, but to help us to change our experiences, to bring us from grass to glory. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Wherever you are, grab your communion emblems. This prayer meeting is coming to a close. We just want to declare by the communion table that all that the Father has made available through the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is ours and the, uh, for our children in Jesus' name. The Bible says the, the promise, this promise is for you and for your children and your children's children in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this communion emblems. We declare it fit for to represent 
represent the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we break the bread, we say our bodies will never be broken again in our lives and in the lives of our children in Jesus' name. And as we drink of the cup, we drink of all of the benefits of the new covenant. We say that the blood that is continually speaking better things is availing for us, availing for our children, availing for our household in Jesus' precious precious name amen and amen and the church said amen 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 hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah